Some people love working with numbers, others do not. However, almost everyone can agree that numbers can be helpful when dealing with complex characteristics such as blood pressure or temperature. When going to the doctor, we find value in seeing the numbers that represent our blood pressure rather than simply a doctor reporting if they feel it's too high or too low without looking at numbers first. Similarly, checking the temperature for today's forecast is often more informative when it is given in degrees rather than in words, such as today will be chilly. Likewise, test scores are numbers we get from tests and they help us to understand rather complex phenomena. For example, we can compare test takers' performance with each other in an objective way and we can see whether a test taker has met certain standards such as scoring above the benchmark number that represents the minimal skills to be a brain surgeon. So, we know that scores are products of taking tests. But how do we get those numbers? In this video, we will look at how standardized tests are scored. You may think that scores begin to form when you start taking a test. That's not true. It's even earlier than that. The big bang of your score starts when the test is developed. Experts develop test questions that are connected to some set of standards, such as standards for becoming a licensed teacher or standards for high school level algebra. Once you have answered test questions, those answers are placed into a statistical model to obtain a score. When your answers are scored, they connect to the meaning and the purpose of the test, such as classifying you as able to practice as a teacher. Let's imagine we're trying to figure out the balancing ability of a child. There are many tasks you could ask the child to do, such as to stand on one foot for as long as she can, or to walk across a balanced beam. We asked Lucinda to complete many balancing tasks. She was able to stand on one foot for 5 seconds, but not for 10 seconds. She made it halfway across the balance beam before falling off. Well, now you know how she performed on each task, because you directly observed it. But what you need to know is, for what score of balancing ability do you expect someone to be able to stand on one foot for 5 seconds to not be able to stand on one foot for 10 seconds, to be able to walk across half of a balance beam, and to not be able to walk across a full balance beam. As long as your balancing test was developed well by experts in balancing, you can take Lucinda's observed behaviours and connect them to a score that represents her balancing ability and aligns well with the things that she can and cannot do. This is the logic behind standardized test scoring. You, the test taker, show us what you can do through answering test questions. For an elementary math test, did you show that you could add and subtract numbers, but then you struggle to multiply and divide them? If so, test makers can use a statistical model to ask about the chances that your math score is a particular number, let's say 250 given the skills that you've showed us. As long as you show us enough information, the model can help test makers to be quite certain of your math ability score. But for sure, they need a lot of information before they can feel confident about your score. This is why standardized tests can be quite long. If you only respond to three test questions, they just don't know enough about you to feel confident in their scoring. In that scenario, the estimate of your score would be more of a guess, like a guess as to which card a poker player has in his hand, given the other cards on the table. We all know guesses like that can be wrong too often. That may be fun for a poker game, but it would make test scores very untrustworthy. However, as you demonstrate more and more about what you can do on test questions that were well developed by experts in math, the chance that your score is a good representation of your ability gets higher and higher. 
Measurement experts do everything they can to ensure that your test score matches well with the skills you showed them through your answers.